Greetings, ghouls. Welcome to Densville Horror Talk. I'm your host, Ronan James, and as always, joined by the lovely Steph Infection. Hi, Scream Hearts. Tonight, we're going to talk and review the 2023 film, The Boogeyman, based on a 1973 short story by Stephen King. Mm -hmm. And we just went and saw this one recently mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. theaters, the only place you can see it right now. This is true. And, uh, and we had a good time. Yeah. I was scared. <laughs> Very scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's usually scared. But uh, before we get into uh, our review of the movie, a bit about us. I am Ronan James. I am a veteran stuntman and stunt coordinator, second unit director turned director and producer now on the Deadsville rock and roll mystery sitcom. I'm the creator of the Deadsville Mythos and uh, got some other shorts out there and I'm still working actively in the uh, film world as a stunt coordinator. Not so much a stuntman, but if you uh, watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 or Gotham or uh, what else? I was in both of those and I fought Sylvester Stallone once uh, and I was the coordinator on a horror movie called Death House, which was my first experience working with Kane Hodder, who is now our puppet voice. Yes, yes. So uh, all comes full, full circle. circle. Yes. <laughs> Steph Infection, my partner here, mm -hmm. is uh, a producer on mm -hmm. Deadsville Rock and Roll Mysteries, as well as all of our content. She mm -hmm. is a uh, horror host and personality with yes. us here at Deadsville, and uh, dance choreographer, theater leader, mm -hmm. uh, music promoter, merch aficionado. Yes. Many, many hats for Steph Infection. The list is ongoing for both of us, I think. So, so welcome back, yeah. Steph Infection. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having you. I can't get ready yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, so before we get into the show, uh, make sure that you, if you're watching us on YouTube, that you hit that subscribe button mm -hmm. and like and Where comment and all that fun stuff that helps our algorithm. We are also a podcast now, though, that you can listen to on Spotify and uh, many other platforms. We're still getting our stuff out there, but our first two episodes are on Spotify yeah, and YouTube and mm -hmm. uh, a couple other Apple places. Yeah, Apple yeah, Podcasts and mm -hmm. I think Amazon, a few other places. So we're getting out there. We're, we're new to the podcast game, but... Yeah, but listen to us while you're driving or yeah. showering or... Yeah, we're not new Cooking to the entertainment or... game. We've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we, we like to think we have some good insight on some of this stuff. Mm. Maybe some insight that others don't have. So, mm -hmm. who knows? If not, I, I usually make a jackass out of myself. So, at least you have that. Absolutely. Always. It's <laughs> good for that. <laughs> so, uh, what's up with the mailbag coming up, Steph Infection? Oh, well, we are going to be featuring some of you. So, if any of you out there in... Uh, Deadsville fan world <laughs> or, or listener world want to have an opinion uh, want to tell us something, have an opinion have a comment on a movie that you know that we're going to be reviewing or something that we ask have reviewed, question. ask a question ask something unrelated, ask one of us a question uh, we may pick your question so what you have to do to get on this little podcast of ours is email your question or statement to Deadsville Horror talk at gmail.com and very yeah, very easy <laughs> just you know I guess we'll put in the subject uh, podcast or comment or anything I think we're gonna mail know bag. what it is mailbag mail bag. that's it don't listen to what I mailbag yes. in the uh, in subject, the subject. so that we know that you're sending in for the segment we're gonna call mailbag good call Ronan yes and think Quick about that, like that ahead of time <clears throat> so mailbag will be the subject Deadsville Horror Talk at gmail.com. Send us, you know, something. Your questions, your comments, your ideas for future shows, mm -hmm. what you want to see. We'll do lists. We'll do all that stuff. Yeah. Top tens. We're going to have our top ten lists soon. Mm -hmm. We're, once we get a bunch of movies that we've watched for the uh, for the year, we got to yeah. start compiling and giving our tops and all that stuff. Yeah. So Make sure you include your name and your location, uh, yep. whatever you want us to shout out, you know, on... Yeah, well, if you're on well, Instagram, your Instagram handle or whatever you want us to shout everyone. out, put yeah. it in there. We'll read it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and get all the fiends on board. Mm -hmm. All right. So 
Let's get to it. All right. So, The Boogeyman. Yeah, 2023, <laughs> The Boogeyman, mm-hmm. based on a 1973 Stephen King short story, which I have not read. No, me neither. I don't really <laughs> read, but you know. <laughs> I do. I have read uh, a, a lot of Stephen King's uh, stuff and, and short stories, but I haven't read The Boogeyman. Now, after watching the movie, I do want to go back and watch it. Uh, read it. Do back. Yeah, sorry. Do go back and read it. Yes, yeah. I want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't. I've, <laughs> I'm curious how it compares to the movie, and because uh, this was definitely a modern take on whatever yeah. was written back in 1973. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's also should mention that it's PG-13, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it can be you know kind of uh, introductory horror if you've got kids who are into horror or young. Yeah. Teens that are into horror might want make to. sure that they they have uh, they don't have weak hearts. This no. probably wouldn't be the first one I would take them to, but Mm-mm. it's definitely one that you can, you know, bring your kids to. I mean, it's it's got some grisly moments, but yeah, we'll get there. Nothing else, you know, nothing uh, uh, that they I guess can't see, <laughs> but <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. All right, All right, so give us that synopsis, All Stephanie right, Fetching. so here we go. The Boogeyman. High school student Sadie Harper and her younger sister Sawyer are still reeling from the recent death of their mother. They're not getting much support from their father, Will, a therapist who's dealing with his own in- intense pain. When a desperate patient unexpectedly shows up at their house seeking help, he leaves behind a terrifying supernatural entity that preys on families and feeds on the suffering of its victims. Mm, wow. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do our uh, first takes yep. in a moment. <laughs> for, <laughs> but before that, we're going to review our writer, director, and cast in this yeah. uh, in this this movie. Mm-hmm. So our writers, it was obviously based on a Stephen King short story, but the screenplay writers, Scott Beck and Brian Woods, they wrote... They both did um, they A Quiet Place. They did A Quiet Place, correct, yeah. yes. So, uh, and they did Haunt as well, I see yes. on there. And Haunt was a nice, uh, fun... Um, it's a haunted attraction uh, oh, feature. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. It was a fun one. Uh, I didn't realize that they wrote that. I, I oh. knew that they wrote the quiet, a quiet place, uh, but I didn't realize that they wrote yes, Haunt. Too. Uh, we watched, uh, yes, I yeah, forgot yeah, that was, about that. Haunt was really good. So, yeah, Scott Beck and Brian Woods, pretty good job. The other writer is Mark Heyman. Let's see what he has done. One, Black Swan. Black Swan, yeah. The Skeleton Twins, Strange Angel. Yeah, he probably would did some touch-ups or something on it. Uh, you know, the uh, this is it's a studio picture, so mm-hmm. it's uh, it's uh, whatever. Oh, it's asking me to rate it right now. We're on a then you got to sign in. Don't do it. Oh, there you go. Geez. Now I do it all the time. I do it every week. <laughs> I should have already been signed in. Hey, <laughs> don't do it. Stop asking me. <laughs> but uh, so the director Rob Savage. I mean, I don't. I haven't seen anything that he was in or directed. I have not either. Yeah. Both of his features before this, he's won awards. Both of his features before this were found footage movies, which I am not the fondest of. Oh, I am. But he did uh, 2021's Dash Cam, which people really liked uh, and people said was really, like, creepy. Oh, I'll have to uh, see and that. in 2020, he directed a movie called Host, which was another. Uh, kind of POV found footage thing. So Hmm. uh, this is his first feature where it's not POV, gimmicky, whatever, you know, doing that kind of thing. Um, And he's really kind of let loose to be more of a storyteller and uh, spread his wings, if Mm -hmm. you will, because I find the POV stuff to be very restrictive as a a storyteller. Uh, You're very limited by what your point of view is unless you're managed to get... You're in a building with all kinds of security cameras you can jump to to piece stuff together and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to, uh, you know, to maintain that and and really tell all the aspects of a story that you need to tell when you're doing that kind of thing. It's it's tricky. Uh, A lot of times I feel like they're done because budgetary restraints because it's real easy to do something like that, too. What's the most famous uh, trilogy with uh, Paranormal Activity? Yeah. Those are like security cameras in the house, home yep. movies and stuff, and they they were kind of, I mean, 
obviously Blair Witch, but I feel like they were the first ones that I felt like actually captured like different rooms and different feelings and stuff. So yeah, that was where we got our first kind yeah. of POV horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, but this one is a is a norm a straight you know narrative film. So uh, it's a little different for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and he does really well with it. I mean, his direction's really good. I like. I mean, because let's face it, the and this is kind of getting into first takes, but this is a generic story that we've all heard before. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's the boogeyman. We're all told the story of the boogeyman as a kid. So, what this movie does well and shines is the direction and the characters and the acting and and the characterization and stuff like that. So his direction is a big part of of what uh, what helps absolutely keep you in. This mm -hmm. movie, you mm -hmm. know, and, and really, there was only one real problem I had with the whole thing, like creative direction wise, and we'll get to that later when we hit Ronan's Rants. Oh, that's <laughs> so the very end. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> the very end. <laughs> but, but yeah, he does a, I think he does he did a great a good job. job. Yeah. yeah. And he builds suspense really well. Um, yeah, yeah, great. Some good jump scares in there. I know people tend to think jump scares are kind of cheap, but you got to, you know, oh. I had to mix some in there. You got to have some in there and get yeah. the heart going. Get you, you know, get the blood pumping. I yeah, there was <laughs> there was some crazy jump scares, but yeah, a decent cast also. Oh, so. the cast I really mm -hmm. enjoyed. I, that's where the two girls, the two stars, the co-stars of it. Uh, Sophie Thatcher, who's from Yellow, Yellow Jackets, Jackets which, which I haven't seen, but I hear great things. of us have watched. Yeah. It's on both of our lists. Too, yeah. Uh, and and she's in that, which I didn't realize when uh, when I went and saw this. I didn't realize till I started doing my research afterwards. Also after in like it. the Boba Fett series or something. Who Sophie Thatcher was? Is that? Um, no, no, Vivian Lyra Blair. No, 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 hold on. Uh, I, might I don't want to hold on too long. I know, I know. Just keep going. Yeah, she was in the book of Boba Fett. Oh, the book of Boba Fett. Huh. Oh, God. So that's why I, I was... Sophie. Like, yes, she was in the book of... Oh, no. She's one of those awful... I didn't watch it. She's one of the awful gang members in the book of Boba Fett that rides the neon... The neon scooter speeders. Oh, He's God. looking at me like I've seen oh, this. And no, I can... It's just, I'm sorry, it's just coming to me now. It's so just, you're realizing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. Yep. Now, I, yeah, that's funny. God. Wow, that's crazy then. Both of these girls have Star Wars ties. That's... Because Vivian Lyra Blair is princess, young Princess Leia mm -hmm. in the uh, Ben Kenobi series, mm -hmm. and, which sucked. I hated it. It was awful. The Ben Kenobi series was fucking awful. I tried to watch it. I made it two episodes in and had to turn it off, uh, mostly because of, of Vivian Lyra Blair, but not because of necessarily because of her acting, because it was so poorly written. The, the writing was so bad, mm -hmm. so bad. I, I just couldn't take it. So I turned that off. Here, the writing for her character is excellent, and she is awesome. Man. Yeah, She does really a great good. job. Yes. She plays the stereotypical kid that the parents don't listen to that's you know mm -hmm. that, that, ex having, that, yeah, that sees the boogeyman issues. first and or, you know no, and she, she doesn't see it first i'm talking about vivian lira oh, oh i'm, I'm sorry. talking about the young leia yeah i'm talking about young leia here uh so young leia is the first one that sees the boogeyman. and you were a little nervous when you saw her. you were like that was it yes yeah, when I, I didn't yeah. realize it was her going in once i realized it was her i was like oh no because Kenobi was so bad. But then when the movie started rolling along, she was really, really good. And I was like, wow. So, yeah. so she can actually act. It was just that bad of a script for Kenobi. And she was really, really solid. Really solid. Is she a lot younger in that series? She's a couple years younger. Uh, mm -hmm. There's pictures of her you can yeah. see. Uh, it's in my... I'll, I'll pl I got a second to plug. Go watch my one-minute movie review mm -hmm. of... Boogeyman, because I have the picture of her as young Leia in there, and you'll see it was probably two years ago, I think, oh, two go. or three years ago. So yeah, she's much younger, and probably not as good of an actress either. Uh, but the writing was so bad on that. Mm. But wow, that's crazy. Both of these actresses yeah. have uh, have Star Wars ties. The force, uh, the force is strong with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> nanu, nanu. <laughs> I'm gonna piss off all the nerds out there. Oh, I'm not even doing that oh. right. 
<laughs> Live long and nanu nanu, nerds. <laughs> I'm one of you. Don't send me angry hate mail. Oh, great. Our first <laughs> round of mailbag. Uh, all right. So uh, then we have is the dad, Chris Messina, mm-hmm. who, uh, yeah, he's, he's good yeah. enough. I mean, his character is just kind of like. He's in like different uh, odd and like little horror films and You've stuff. You've seen him before? No, I, I, I didn't. I just looked at Looked him up list. and he's been, uh, okay. And then, you know, but his, I mean, his, his acting's good enough. He plays like the disconnected dad who's kind of ignoring his kids and mm-hmm. you know that's what brings the boogeyman yeah uh, and then we had david dox oh. das malshin i don't know how to say it but i've seen him in a million things he's been in a bunch of things he's in and suicide squad and yep dark knight my, my, yep. he was uh yeah his 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 part in uh in the suicide squad was outstanding yes I mean, him as polka dot man in suicide squad was was brilliant and his demise very sad uh when he finally becomes a hero mm-hmm. mom i'm a hero oh that was great yeah i didn't realize Brooke he was one of joker's thugs in the dark knight i hated that movie too oh yeah and <laughs> and recently you didn't watch this but just a couple months ago i watched the boston strangler and he played the the guy the same um that they thought actually was the boston strangler but it wasn't and he died mm-hmm. like in real life albert something i forget but uh yeah yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's... Uh, he played a... Uh, well, we just also saw him when we watched the uh, Shudder Chainsaw yes. Awards. Yeah, so he was the, a host. I'm sorry, the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards yeah. on Shudder. So if you watch that, yeah. He, and that's where we saw the uh, the first trailer for this, too, mm-hmm. with a little clip of his scene. They showed it, and, uh, yeah. and his scene was pretty creepy. So Very creepy. He's not in the movie very long, but... No, but uh, yeah, and that's, you know, there's there's more to the cast... Uh, yeah, we don't, need to. we don't need to get into them all. That's some main some cast. mean girls, you know. Yep, yep, yep. They're all just kind of yeah. peripheral characters. That was our main three. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get to our first takes. Steph infection. All right, my first take. We always make you go first. I know you do. <laughs> Because you usually go on a little bit longer than me. Uh, my first take was that I thought it was scary as crap. <laughs> and <laughs> I wanted to scream. I wanted to jump out of my skin. Um, the story, like we said, is, is just fine. It's just like a basic story. It was just the jump scares and, and how quickly things started happening, even though some audiences are saying the opposite which i think is crazy uh so overall i really enjoyed it i thought it was one of the scarier things that i've seen recently yeah i'm gonna agree i really enjoyed it as well um i mean it's 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 a pretty standard generic story that like i said we all know about the boogeyman we've all heard the story of the boogeyman the monster in the closet the monster under the bed hiding in the darkness all that kind of stuff i mean it's been done a million times so we're not treading any uh any new territory here we're not breaking any ground and they're definitely not doing anything different but they do the the basics really well and the basics is to have decent characters that you care about that mm-hmm. you invest in that you root for mm-hmm. uh in your storyline i mean if your plot especially if your plot is going to be you know as thin as up oh, there's a monster in the closet it follows tr- people who've suffered trauma around and kind of you know starts feeding on your fear and and sadness and, you know that that's it's been done we just saw it in well, smile and gave away what <laughs> <laughs> what the monster's there for. Well, that's the boogeyman. That's, that's what the... <laughs> I kind of would have liked a little bit more of a backstory on the monster. Yeah, I guess, well, they want to save that for a sequel, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, again, I mean, I would have to read the uh, Stephen King story to know exactly what was maybe the main be, intention. Yeah, but a summer read. But, uh, but no, I, I mean, I... I enjoyed it and again the the direction was great there were some good jump scares in there um it's a very dark movie and by dark i mean 
shadows, very shadowy movie. Um, he very low lit. There's a lot, you know, because again, we're, we're, you know, and it's a creative choice that's made that, that, uh, you know, obviously if you're, you're trying to kind of let your audience feel what your characters are feeling as something's lurking in the darkness around you, then you want to have a dark movie. You want to have a dark, you know, yeah. composition. So it would not be a good idea for the movie theater to turn on the lights 20 oh, minutes God. left in the movie. That was, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a bad experience. That happened. AM, AMC, Marple <laughs> 10, bad on you, turning the lights on with 20 minutes left in the fucking movie. That tiss, was awful. Tiss. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I definitely enjoyed it, definitely would recommend it, and only have one major gripe with the, with the whole thing, and we can get into that when we... We get into our spoilers and my ranting. Woo! Oh, yeah. Here we go. But, uh, Buckle up. <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely recommend this one. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're a fan of this kind of uh, supernatural horror, you'll, you'll definitely dig it. It's got great moments and some great scares and, and really good characters, great acting. Good, uh, good characters you root for. These two girls are very easy to root for and like because they're written very well and the actresses do a great job. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm wondering, though, if it won't be as, um, have the same, like, people have the same experience seeing it at home. So I felt like, just, I, I just feel like the loudness, and, you know. Yeah, the it, sound design does play a good, uh, yeah. you know, a good, like, he, I'll give him, I don't know if that was a, uh, if that was the director's choice or if that was just who they brought in to do the sound design's decision but the sound manipul manipulates you into some of the scares and like some of you we're seeing this more in, smile did it too that's another one where mm -hmm. like you had like, they would even use sound to do like smash cuts uh to take you from one scene to the next and mm -hmm. it was just rah just build build dead tension da, 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 yeah. and then just i mean it's uh it's very creative and uh and and yeah they did it here and and the audio and the score and everything works really well. The uh, only thing, not that we're doing trivia now, but the only thing I did read about them changing the sound is um, they said the initial screenings, people screamed so loud after cer certain like jump scares that they were missing the dialogue. So then um, they put a little bit more of a time lag between, between yeah, yeah, yeah. until they brought up with... Um, Interesting. Yeah. With the dialogue. Interesting. And I screamed. <laughs> I even heard you give a little <laughs> at one point. <laughs> hey, man. Was, uh, there was a lot of people making noise in that thing. Oh, was, man. We had a nice little audience in there. Yeah. And, uh, one lady yeah. snoring, but, you know, besides that. <laughs> Yeah. One guy down the aisle from us had light up sneakers on for some fucking yes. reason. And I, I was like, what looking the at fuck them. is going on? Why are your I shoes keep lighting up? <laughs> Turn your fucking shoes off, man. I don't think you can. I don't think there's like a... Like, they're always supposed to light up when you step on them, though. I oh, thought. Like, yeah. He, like, he, had, you know? he was in the recliner. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it was bizarre. They were like, it looked like a lava lamp. Leave your light up sneakers at the door. <laughs> fuck, man. That was awful. All right. Anyway, yeah. let's dig deeper. It's spoiler time. So uh, if you haven't seen The Boogeyman, now's the time to pause and mm -hmm. go to the movie theater, watch the movie right this second, and then race back home and unpause yes. the podcast. Right, so right, right, this now, right, right now. Right now. <laughs> So you want to start off with the with the opening scene, which I missed yeah, because yeah, yeah. Let's the, let's, they, I'll start with the opening scene. Yes, because you didn't have my popcorn ready. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, the the opening scene is is uh, we got a girl in a crib. Uh, she's one ish, maybe she could talk and stuff, and she's standing up in her crib, put the bed, lights out, all that all that stuff, and. Uh, I've never heard this yet, so I'm listening too. And and something in the well, the closet clicks open and starts open and creak, creak, creak. And uh, I know that's right. The kid can't talk. It's like an infant, and the infant is like uh, yeah, because they said SIDS. Yeah, yeah. It's just looking at the at the. It's standing up and it's looking at the closet, and then you start hearing a voice that kind of starts saying eh, it's daddy, but it's like fucked up it's like a it's like a it's like changing it's like the vocal cords are like twisting and ch changing and and you kind of see glimpses of like 
uh, something crawling out of the out of the, the closet and uh, and the baby it's and then you hear oh it's daddy honey it's daddy and she goes to the edge of the crib and next thing you see they cut to just blood splattering all over the wall and uh, <laughs> it's your favorite when they start off with a child death <laughs> <laughs> they mean business so uh, so yeah we get the uh, right off the bat boom. And uh, and then we go from there. We cut to meeting our uh, psychiatrist dad. Right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, so that was our opening. They they killed a kid right off the bat. A baby. Yeah. Uh, but but that's what the boogeyman does. The boogeyman kills kids. Yeah, he does. So uh, so that happens, and then we jump to our actual story, and it's. Uh, the dad, we meet the therapist, and he's finishing up with a session with a client. The client leaves, and uh, he has sessions in his house. And so this is when Lester Billington Billingsworth shows up. Well, first our, the, the, we have a he takes the girls to school for like back to school for the first time. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah before yeah, yeah. Lester. Yeah, came, that's right. Yeah, that's it right. was like their first day back and. Yeah, yeah, because their mom had recently died. Yes, so, uh, so yeah, we're into spoilers, so we can talk about that real quick. Yeah, that is a common theme nowadays. Yeah, in, trauma. In not only in movies, in everything. I mean, everything is about trauma. Every, everybody's had it, everybody goes through it, everybody's got some trauma, everybody's got some PTSD. So I guess we're all just realizing it now, we're all just coming to grips with it, we're all learning how to cope with it. Mm -hmm. So it's in everything, it's everywhere you go. I can't log into social media without somebody having their trauma all over the place talking about it, or, you know, I can't, everything is, you know, so everything is about trauma and just like in uh, what was the last movie we reviewed uh, the, the trauma the, yeah the Pope's Exorcist the trauma of the, the dad dying the dad dying yeah. and now this one's the trauma of the mom dying I mean there's always some trauma uh, nobody ever just gets haunted you anymore, know Disney do they? always took parent deaths <laughs> and made them like you know go off it with happy endings. <laughs> Did they? I don't know. Disney? Does anybody like? Does anybody not have trauma though and get haunted? I'm wondering. I mean, is that a thing? Can you not have trauma and be haunted? I don't know. I don't know if that's like actually a thing. I don't thing know. Well, can... it makes you weaker. Is what they're. Yeah, it makes you susceptible to it. That's what they say. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's just becoming such a. Wow! Well, it was just trope. The last, yeah. Such a cliche for Hollywood to lean on now. Such a crutch for Hollywood to lean on. But the well again, it, I mean, it's it's been even before that <laughs> though, and even just in religion in general. If you had any, you know, um, I guess any like traumatic experiences that would get you closer to the other side in any way, near death experiences. Well, yeah, near like death that. experience is I mean, different. But now they're just saying like anything, any kind of trauma, like yeah. Like seeing, like in, in this but, one, it's but, your mom died, and they didn't. Did they say how she died? I don't remember if they said what did they. So, say? so this is the thing. She died in a car accident. Okay. Yeah, and I'm yeah. going to bounce around really quickly right now, but they did not get attacked because they, you know, their mom died. I mean, they did, but Lester saw that they had a death recently, so he right. felt comfortable going to the psychologist, Right. and then he brought the being there. Right, right. Later on, though, I feel like like the girl was trying to like conjure her mother back, and I was like, oh no, mm -hmm. now we're getting into... Yeah, yeah, that crossing, was... Uh, yeah, yeah, crossing planes. About that. Yeah, interesting. Uh, but yeah, so so Lester Billings here, our David Doc Malchian, he... Uh, He's the father, it turns out, of the opening scene uh, child who's mm -hmm. killed, and he shows up at uh, the father, Will Harper's house, because his mm, medical practice is in his house, his office is in his house, so, and like we said, he's finished up with a patient, Will comes in, uh, I need to talk to somebody, da -da -da -da, and he agrees to listen to him, and yeah, he tells him, you know, I was accused of... Uh, killing my kids, all three of my kids died, and uh, mm -hmm. 
and they said it was this and you know it was a monster and nobody believes me and he kind of gives them the rundown and and uh there's a picture one of his his oldest tried to draw it before they passed and yeah yeah the, the picture is a, is a key that'll come in later so he tears the picture out of this book and gives it to the to the doctor and uh, you know he's looking at it and we don't see the picture yet uh but then, of course, oh, yeah, excuse me, i got to go to the bathroom. Doctor gets up and goes and calls 911, of course. Yeah. And, oh, this guy's dangerous. And uh, now he he doesn't... He did shut the closet before he left because the guy asked him to. Yeah, so then yeah, we he cut to the yeah. Lester seeing the closet the is closet's open. open again. Mm. So now Lester's on the move. Uh, we didn't really get into the older sister, Sadie, goes to school, gets bullied and teased. Uh, and She's wearing her mother's dress. One of the girls spills something yeah, yeah, we on her. Know. Yeah, it's you know we, she gets bullied and teased and goes home. Mm -hmm. Her dad doesn't realize she, she's home, so now she's home. And Lester, the crazy one, is now loose in the house uh, because the closet was opened and he's on the run trying to get away from the boogeyman. And uh, and yeah, he's yeah. We see him like behind hanging. shoulders, and then we see that. And then she hears in her mom's studio, I guess she was a painter, all this commotion. She goes in and all of her her mother's, you know, uh, paintings are ripped and it's a mess. And she f hears what sounded like a struggle in the closet and went in and she finds Lester hanging on the back of the door. Yep, he hung himself. Back in the door, uh, inside their house. So, yep, more trauma. This poor girl just can't catch a break. She finds this dead dude. Back of the door. Uh, but, you know, Lester had a hitchhiker. <laughs> so, uh, that night, right? So, uh, I guess we should mention we meet Sawyer uh, the, before this. We, well, when we first meet Sawyer, Sawyer has that globe. She has that moon, that light up. Yeah, she's got a lot of glow. But Sawyer's afraid of the dark. Boogeyman does not. That that closet scene is not until after, obviously, Lester right, right. brought it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Lester brought it. But uh, but she's scared of the dark. Sawyer's afraid got, of the dark. Yeah, she has and a lot of toys that she's got. This glowing moon that she uses. Because remember, no, yeah, in the opening scene, or there's a scene before the boogeyman's in the closet where she rolls the thing in the, the closet, closet and yeah. there's nothing there yeah. yeah she uses the it's like a moon that lights up a ball moon, yeah. and she sleeps with it and holds it and uh, so yeah she uses that to uh look over to the closet and and there's nothing in the closet it lights up the closet so she's like okay and uh so now when lester has unleashed this creature later that night then we get the door open we kind of, we get right to it, right? We got right uh, to it. The... It was the most ridiculous, I, like I was expecting, okay, first scene, we're going to have this, like the door creaking and it's going to be spooky. Oh, that's right, yeah. So yes, it, yes, it's yes, that yes. night and she is, first off, like you just had a guy die in your house. Like I, I would be sleeping with my sister. I, I don't know. Like right. th there, we would not just be in like separate rooms if I was that scared. Cause she was already scared. Um, well, Sawyer didn't see the dead body or anything. No, but she she pulled later. up on the bus when they were wheeling the body out, and then people were like, True "Oh, enough, did but... your dad die too?" Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a bit rough. But but she's under. <laughs> hey, kids are fucking mean. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So she she shuts. She makes her dad. You know, she shuts the door, and the closet door. She's under the covers, and. I don't know. I don't know how it, it all happens. She starts hearing some some noise, but that closet door just comes flying open, yeah. and this thing comes. I mean, I was not you expecting see a shadow it. Shoot out! Holy crap! And go I, to the bed. I yeah. I was like hiding in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was loud. I mean, it loud. Was, they, yeah, yeah. The audio was jacked way up on that one because they wanted you to. <laughs> They wanted, they wanted you to jump. Oh, my God. It was good. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah, I got good. it. And they, they built the suspense up really because it got real quiet. Bye! Oh, my God. <laughs> that just scared me again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was good. And then the thing goes under the bed, and then she has the ball. And uh, no, I don't know. First off, any kid would have gone running out of that room. <laughs> like, yeah, well. Yeah. Full, or started screaming, know. Dad or Sadie. You know, it was for their sister. It's screaming something. Yeah. 
But she takes the ball, the light ball, hangs, goes underneath the bed, and uh, and rolls it under the bed, and and the thing rolls, and rah! You have to first look at our yeah uh, at our boogeyman, the face yeah. of the boogeyman, just mm-hmm. for a split second, mm-hmm. and then that's it. Yeah. Right? And then what? She falls out of bed or something, or what happens then? She went and got her sister. Her sister thought she fell out of bed, and she said she was scared. Uh, yeah. Another creepy thing, yeah, when. Um, so that night, she comes out and she's like, I fell out of bed, I have a loose tooth. So instead of, you know, putting her back to bed, she decides to tie a string around her loose tooth. This Sa- is that uh, night. Uh, Sadie does. Sadie. Sadie ties it around yeah, Sawyer's. Yeah, Sawyer's, because that's what they did to her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she puts it on the doorknob of her closet, okay? <laughs> After, now this kid, she kind of talks her, I guess, into very quickly, you know, you just, you had a bad dream. You're, you know, it wasn't real. I don't know. I guess you're like, okay, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe kid, maybe it was. Maybe. Um, <laughs> but, so she goes, one, two, and they're like joking, are you going to go in three, are you going to go two? Well, the door just slams, that tooth oh, comes tooth. out. Yeah. She starts crying. She thinks her sister did it. She, they don't realize. She thought, you know, I don't know what happened. So now they're in bed together, I guess, you know, trying. she's trying to comfort her and go to sleep. Yeah. And the tooth get sucked up on the string into the door. Yeah, yeah. Which we see later. Yeah. In a very gross... Yeah, yeah, the tooth comes back to haunt them. Sadie was... Like, she won two, and then she just kind of stopped. And again, they do the audio with the bang of the door, oh, yeah. and, you know, to get you oh. But, uh, but you yeah. know, effectively using that. And then one... Too like they real that was another tactic for building up the tension and mm-hmm. and then when they fight and then because she goes wait yeah. and you know she, and she's like okay and she lets go of the door yeah and it and just slams bang on its own yeah that was cool yeah uh, yeah so then where we go after that we got the the bully girls and they come over to the house now to hang out don't they isn't that so we kind of have like. Sadie's like, you know, she's missing her mom and she's she's trying to like, you know, co- like talk to her mother with the with uh, the yeah, lighter. Yeah, the, she's sitting experimenting on with a Ouija, Ouija board, just like all teens mm-hmm. checking out the playing with that Ouija board, the gateway <laughs> drug to witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she's messing with that. Um, yeah. She's she, upset. She keeps trying to talk. The, the ongoing thing throughout this movie is that she keeps trying to get her dad to talk to her about her mother and he shuts it down every single time yeah yeah it's made evident that she keeps trying to bring it up and mm-hmm. trying to to talk about it and he just he keeps telling her well, you're going to go talk to your own therapist yeah and he's not he's not seeing one he's not dealing with it but you know. mm-hmm. it's very evident and that's one of the themes of the when the boogeyman comes is when parents aren't paying attention to their kids that's, so that yeah. was like one of the... That was something that Lester said. Yeah, yeah, Lester, Lester. points this out. Yeah, so, uh, yeah it was good. Uh, that, that, was, uh, that was good stuff that they put in, you know, worked into the lore. Um, you know, Lester and, and Lester's book gets found at one point. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but, I mean, before that, we, you know, uh, so uh, Sawyer <laughs> sees it again, I think. Well, I think, she? I don't remember at what point this was, but it was very creepy. She, oh... Was it after the... T- oh, shit, no, no. I don't know if it was after the tooth. She's laying in bed, and she hears her sister come in. She's under the covers, and she hears oh, her go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, hey, Sawyer, sits down in the bed, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, that wasn't nice, and pulls it off, and nobody's there. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, whoa. I yeah. wasn't expecting that part at yeah, all. Yeah, so, yeah, it starts messing with Sawyer. Yeah, that yeah, was good, really too, messing with her. Because you don't, yeah, yeah, it's definitely the door opens, closes. You hear her sit on the bed and all, and, and, it's, and Sadie's voice. and Yeah. Know, spot on. Yeah. And does she get, does she get, like, Something, I think, happens to her there, because she runs out, and she goes to Sadie, and she's like, that was a mean trick, and she kicks her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we tell you, I have yeah. no idea what she's talking about. Uh, but, yeah, so then we have Sadie's uh, slumber party, and, uh, you know, she's having trouble adjusting, and uh, was it her best friend? 
the uh, the Asian girl. Yeah. Uh, I forget the character's name, but that's her best friend. She's friends with this one girl, and they hang Bethany. around with Bethany. Yes, Madison. Who mm -hmm. is Bethany? Uh, but they have like their little clique of mean girls that Bethany hangs out with, and mm -hmm. uh, some meaner than others. But uh, cool. they decide to have a slumber party and try to cheer uh, Sadie up. And Sadie and, just found a little joint of her mother's, yeah, and a Zippo. That. So yeah, that yeah. because it's, it comes up later. Yeah, and, the Zippo in the joint when she's looking through some old stuff yeah. for moms. And she starts coughing, and this is where the tooth comes back. She runs into the bathroom. No, 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 we don't got you jumping ahead. Well, no, I'm not. That's before the closet. Oh, yeah, you're, you're right. It is before the closet. Yeah, I knew yeah, that's yeah, where you're going. Yeah. Okay, so. all right. <laughs> yep, okay, you're right. So they're, they're getting along, even though these are all mean girls that she was just fighting with, and they're trying to yeah. Sadie whips smoke. out that joint. She wicks, yeah, she smokes a little bit, and then she starts coughing. They call her lightweight, whatever. She goes into the bathroom and coughs up, chokes a up a string with that tooth on the end. Ah. Um, yeah, that was that was a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they come in. They're like, "Oh, you're a lightweight. We want to see the room that you yeah, know, yeah, the so guy yeah. died." And she was like, Ugh. "I mean, she's trying to, I guess, just impress them in some way." So she says, "Okay." Yeah, they're having fun. They're kind of being friendly with her, so she wants to be one of the gang. She wants mm -hmm. to keep the party going, and uh, yeah, she. She goes up. She takes him to the closet and walks in and they go. Well, it appears that they shut the door and lock it. Right. And she's banging, 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 banging. And uh, guess who shows up? The boogeyman. Yep. And I think she's finally realizing. She sees it for the first yeah. time. Yes. She realizes that it's real. Yep. Can't get it open. But when she goes out, the girls were saying I, they were. It seemed like they were under the impression that she just wasn't opening the door for them, because they said the one friend, Bethany, Bethany said, said it was stuck. She said it was stuck. We couldn't. We didn't lock it. We couldn't do anything. And uh, she smacks uh, Sadie. Smacks that real bratty. Smacks the bitchy girl. Yeah. <laughs> awful human being. Yeah. 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 In the face. Uh, so they all leave. Natalie. Natalie was the shitty girl. Oh. Yes, Maddie Nichols as Natalie was our shitty girl. And when she's le when she's <laughs> leaving, when they're leaving, this is your favorite scene that will come up probably later when uh, Sawyer's playing video games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. get there. Mm-hmm. We'll playing video games there. in the dark and... Uh, Why are you giving it away already? Because we got to see how they end up at the hospital. <laughs> oh, how they end up at the hospital. I forget. Because the boogeyman comes and she's playing video games and she lays on the couch. Oh, she's trying yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. hide. Well, long story short, the boogeyman gets this little child and whams on the TV screen. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Throws her into the TV screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to think he's walked away and she looks up and but boom. So, so yeah. Um, we're gonna get into the rant. <laughs> I might as well get it over with. All you right. Because this is rant. Because this is where it's the most egregious uh, offense of the of the of the of the movie. Yeah. So I get that the creative choice and the creative direction here is to keep it dimly lit and darkly lit and the shadows to play with the mind and to keep the imagination guessing and to keep the mind kind of guessing and questioning what's going on. And I get it. I get it. But at some point, you've got to say to yourself, common sense got to override your creative, uh, you know, wants and say to yourself, this girl's afraid of the dark. She's been multiply attacked by the boogeyman in the dark. Why would she not be playing video games with every fucking light in the room on? This is what I don't understand and and it's a lot like the movie like there's we meet other characters we will that we'll get to we meet the other character of the the uh was it the the wife yeah of the, of the other Lester's wife. Of Lester's wife yes who also just has candles lit all over the place there's a reason and, for that she said it what what was the reason for the candles she said so she could see it coming because candles were the first um was 
she said candles fire was the first the first light. original light all right but yeah fire, so yeah. it was it yeah was but then easy. there was a scene where it just blew that shit out as when it was that's coming that's how for she would them. see it coming down the hallway walking uh, okay so she could would see not, it. it would blow the candles out but okay. it wasn't just lights going out here and there she could actually see where its legs were. right but if your goal is to protect yourself and to be safe from a creature that lives in shadows and hides from the light wouldn't you turn all the lights on? I mean, that's just common sense. Turn the fucking lights on. Especially this girl who sleeps with a giant globe that is a nightlight. Like, why would She's she be scared. playing video yeah. games She's... in the dark? Yeah. In the dark. In the dark! <sighs> I have to think that the reason... I don't want to get too mad, because I like the movie. I really did. But that's just, like, the one, like, uh, it irks the shit out of me. There's certain things, there's like certain creative choices that just go against common sense sometimes. And that one is just so common sense, it just kills me. I have a feeling they picked that to put her in the dark because most people turn the lights off when they're playing video games. Well, you know, it's, it's not unheard of to want to see the screen a little bit better and dim the lights around you. So I mean, maybe it, it was just... Uh... It depends, sure. There are people that like playing video games in the dark, but... How old would you say she was in the movie? Ten? Eight. eight. Uh, An eight to nine. ten year old who's already afraid of the dark? Probably not going to play video games in the dark. Like, Absolutely that's my not. Whole, uh, yes. That's my Absolutely whole thing. Not. Like, sure, somebody, somebody might play video games in the dark, but this particular eight year old who already is afraid of the dark and has been attacked now by a monster who we know and she knows comes out of the dark corners and closets would not be playing video games in the dark. No. It just would not happen not a it just wouldn't happen so uh, it, it pulled me out man it pulled it took me out of it because i was just like oh why this doesn't why you wouldn't that wouldn't happen she wouldn't do it she just wouldn't do this this wouldn't when i w was growing up when i would walk through my house i would turn every light on on my way and then turn them all off and if i couldn't get to a switch i would <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and i was a kid that was afraid of the dark too i know oh these things God. and i know i would not play video games in the dark if I, even if i suspected there was a monster no. this girl knew there was a monster yeah and she turned off all the lights to play video games yeah. no she didn't no. i'm sorry she didn't no. All right, that's the end of my rant. Let's move on. Well, she gets <laughs> thrown into the TV for being TV. an idiot. So, uh, Dad, Sadie, you know, they rush her to the hospital. Um, Sadie gets a phone call from Lester's. Well, uh, we did miss something. She did go to Lester's house. Yeah, to this get is what answers we mean. Yeah, yeah. She goes, well, she finds the, the book. She finds Lester's book that fell underneath, and this that's is when she gets. before her sleepover, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, yeah. We skipped over some stuff, but there was a, there's a point where, when Lester came in, he tore the page out of the journal and gave it to the doctor. And then when he got up, when he noticed the closet was open, he must have left, dropped the, the journal, and it was underneath the couch. Mm -hmm. And Sadie finds the journal, and she's looking at what's in there, and she sees the page torn, and she does the old ch -ch 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 shading trick, and that's where we get our first look at. Our monster yes. and what it actually looks like, kind of like a four-legged yeah. spider dude thing yeah. with creepy finger teeth and raw. I feel like something and... we've seen before. It yeah, was yeah, actually it's definitely, not definitely it's like a not. little little Cloverfield monster or something. Yeah, you know, like, Look, something like similar to you know a lot of things. I feel like yeah, we've yeah. seen, Again, but nothing still, creepy. Was, we're like, it was, it was decent creature design, but it wasn't anything you know yeah totally crazy, different different yeah. or, or or new or wowing or anything mm -hmm. like that it was but it was good enough yeah it, it served its purpose just like this movie serves its purpose mm -hmm. um so yeah we we she gets the book she finds out the address and she gets the friend to take her to uh the house the house 217 was the address which i read was a nod to the shining Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we'll do throw a couple. We could throw some yeah. trivia and stuff in here sure, along I got the some way more. as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, yeah, it goes meets the meets the ex-wife of Lester. Well, the, the widow of Lester, I should say. And uh, She did write her name. The house looks like, it, I mean, nobody's lived in it in forever. Yeah, murderers is scrawled in graffiti on the uh, wall because the family was accused of you know killing the kids because yeah. all the three kids died of mysterious circumstances and all that. And so she writes. There's a dry erase board on the kitchen, uh, the refrigerator, and she writes her name and phone number. So it, we mm -hmm. needed that to know that she has her oh, phone yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, she does have a run-in with her. 
Yeah, she's and got a gun and she's pretty crazy and she gets freaked out and she runs Well, she in. says that Lester, she was the girl and, and she was like she was like get out. Right? Cuz she well, was afraid she, that she brought it back. She was like, "Damn it, Lester." Like she knew. Oh, yeah, yeah, she yeah, knew yeah, that yeah, he yeah. brought it, he to, brought them. it them, to them. Yeah. So um, So yeah, then she she ran hightails it out of there and but then yeah, later now flash Fast forward, now we get the call. She gets the from call the while she's at the hospital, and she says, I think I know how to kill it. Kill it, yep. But I need your help. Yeah. Come down as soon as you can. Mm hmm. So, so she so heads down. Yeah. And uh, she got bamboozled. <laughs> kind of. Uh, the, the, she, you know, is using her as bait because she yeah. kind of knocked her, the old, her head into the wall. I got, and, and, uh, I got this handcuffed. Look, look over here. I got. Got an idea. We're gonna do it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gonna use you as bait. Stupid girl. Fell for that one. There's candles <laughs> everywhere yeah. on the floor, and there's shotguns like everywhere. She's got a shotgun, and there's I don't know trip some type wires. of trip. She has a trip wire set up. It's like a kill room that she has. She's like Sarah Connored the shit out of this mm -hmm. place. Like she's mm -hmm. like the mom. The the mom is like very gaunt and like. You know, she's, but, but like, rugged and very, yeah, like, reminiscent of Sarah Connor. Yeah, Terminator. actually, like, that's, uh, that's spot on. Because <laughs> she's, like, preparing to kill this thing, and now at this, at this point... When Even you, in yeah, an appearance, yeah, she does, yeah. Uh-huh, she's uh -huh. got, uh, so, yeah, she's got the kill room set up and the trip wires and everything, so when it comes for Sadie, it'll get fucking blasted, and, uh... And it does. Yeah. It, and it does. And um, it's injured. And it's laying on the ground. Yep. So now this is, you know, the point where I guess uh, she doesn't uncuff Sadie. She goes up to, like, check it. Yeah, instead of just keeping filling it she, from the shots. She started uh, she to. She did shoot it once or twice more, but she could have put a few more in. Yeah, I mean, you could see it <laughs> bleeding, you know. You knew what was coming, though. You knew. Yeah. Was, you knew. As soon yeah, as she turned its back, right? Or did I she don't turn remember. Her back? It just, her back on it? This thing came back to life. And Sadie is now, you know, on a, she's handcuffed to a pipe. So yeah. she somehow breaks the pipe. No, no, when she's blasting the oh, thing. Oh, yeah. When it, it, it blasts the pipe. That's right. Okay. Uh, when it kills the, uh, so she, yeah. when it kills Sarah Connor, mm -hmm. <laughs> kills Sarah Connor to gun blast the pipe. So Luckily, blast the pipe and Sadie gets to get free. Uh huh. So she gets out of there. She's upset. She gets a phone call from her father, and he says, "We're home. You know, where are you?" And she's like, "Don't go into the house." And we get a shot of the front of the house. And him answering, and she's like, please believe me. Please believe me. And he goes, okay, I won't. And you could tell he's, I'm not going to go in the house. She doesn't want me to go in the house. And whoo, they both get sucked okay. into the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a cool little. Yeah, yeah. It's just when dad finally believes, it's a little too late. Mm -hmm. He finally becomes a believer. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a good scene. Yeah, she starts running. See, so running to the house, and uh, she gets there, and Dad's nowhere to be found. She finds Sawyer in a closet, wrapped in Christmas lights. She's uh, smart. Yep. <laughs> now, now she's smart. Yeah. Now she's smart. Now, yeah, yeah. Now she didn't wrap herself in Christmas lights when she was playing video games. No. But, but now <laughs> she's in a closet wrapped in Christmas lights. And they're just lights. blinking on and off. <laughs> <laughs> Red and green, blinking on and off. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so then she, she tells her, took you know, dad down the basement yep, and, and she's going to go get him. Yeah. So they both end up going and, uh, that was the, yeah, when they, they fight the creature. Yeah. Long story short. And, and uh, <laughs> Sadie's this whole time when we talked about the Ouija board, she's been talking about her mother being around and she had this, uh, they, they talk about her moving the flame to the left, and it's a candle, or it's the... the she uh, found her mum's Zippo. The Zippo. Yeah. So uh, at the end, they've got the gas everywhere, right? They're pouring gas all over. It's it like a polyurethane, I think. Like oh, for yeah. It was like the, it was the like turpentine. That, yeah. It was like the paint thinner from the mom's... Uh, from the mom's art studio. Yeah, because so, the box falls over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is the paint thinner from the art studio, and... Uh, yeah, did the dad get the broken leg before that? 
Uh, no. The dad was all fucked no, up. Yeah, so yeah, when the they, dad was fucked up. Well, though. when they found him, he was being like held. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gets thrown. At, he gets thrown by trying to like, I don't know, do something. Yeah, and he gets his leg broken. I mean, like, yeah, badly Shut. broken yeah. at one point. Doesn't Sawyer? It starts sucking Sawyer's fucking essence from her face. Or not Sawyer. Uh, Sadie. At one point. Mm -hmm. Oh, and is that when the dad comes in and hits it, and that's when he gets knocked? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's what I okay. Yeah. 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 The end. I mean, that that ending fight was pretty good. It was. Uh, it was decent enough. Um, especially. I mean, I know it's tough when you got like CG monster. Going on, and he was pretty CG, right? Was yeah, CG. And it when looked he, good. I mean, it, yeah, it, was, like it looked good face. for CG. It was very good looking CG. Um, yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, it, it was they good. probably had the, a the weird too. thing uh, the, when it was sucking at her like soul or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was like the face, like the mouth opened up, and there was like another there was like a face hand coming through, and a hand, and, and it was yeah, 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 another face and opening up. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty fucking. These stupid. are reasons, like. Okay, and even though, like, with it getting hurt, like, able to get hurt, I just would like a little bit more of a backstory with what this creature is, why is it there, how can it get hurt? Yeah, how is I it? mean, but, I don't know. but it depends I, on do you have time for it. That's the thing. Like, I get Like, it. I feel like this movie was perfectly timed. It wasn't an for and that, half, yeah. And, and we had, there wasn't any real filler in there. It was all moving the story yeah. along. There wasn't any, like shoehorned in stuff that didn't matter to the plot. I felt like everything helped move the plot along and pertained to the story they were telling. So yeah. I feel like no, I know. if we I got just... too deep into the backstory of the creature, then we're taken away from the story of the girls. It would know. have gotten too slow. I'm right, just curious. Right, right. Like, and, and again, you know, you might, maybe creature. we go into another, you know, maybe we get a sequel. You know, that could be maybe. a story for another sequel. Where did the boogeyman originate? What what kills the boogeyman? How can you? I mean, in this one, obviously, the fire yeah, takes so, it out at the end. So um, we think like her, you know, her mom's spirit kind of comes back. Yeah, yeah, because the, she's been trying to get her to uh, move the flame to the left, and right before, you know, she's trying to get the she's getting a zippo to light, and it doesn't light, maybe, or it lights no, and it then lights, goes to the it, yeah, and, and that's when she, we're like game on, on, and oh, yeah, yeah. she gets the a spray at first oh, yeah, before yeah, yeah, the. Yeah. The can, yep. and she's spraying, and it's it's you know it's hurt and it's on fire, but it's not enough. And then little Sawyer comes up with the can and just yep. douses it with whatever it is, and she throws a Zippo. And yep, and, and it goes up. Goes up. And they grab Dad, and he hobbles out of there, and they get out. Yeah, and that's how we. Uh, and the whole house burns down. Yep. It's sure it's a cover that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, so then we have our final scene where the whole family's in therapy together, seeing the girls' therapist, and even Dad is there, and Dad's finally opening up. Um, yeah, they uh, they get they their, go to leave. Oh well, yeah, yeah, they go to leave, and uh, off camera we hear. The the Dr. Weller say, oh, Sadie, Sadie, can you come, come, come back, back in back here in? for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Sadie comes back in and there's nobody in the room. Nobody. And the, the closet's open. A jar. Ah. And, and then she, yeah. uh, Weller comes back in. Oh, is there something? Did you, did you forget something, honey? And she looks at the door and says, no, and shuts the door. Yeah. And that's so, it. That's it. yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, kind of leaves the door open. Absolutely. Kind of shuts it, too, in case. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, that's the rundown. Those, those were the, the scenes. And, yeah. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a good time. It was a good movie. Oh, I, my gosh. I, I, I was literally sweating. I mean, I know I said this about Evil Dead Rise, but this one, I was like, my ears were covered. I was squinting my eyes. <laughs> I didn't want to see everything. <laughs> I wasn't as bad. I mean, I got the jump scares. I mean, I've seen a lot of these movies before, but, you know, these jump scares were still effective for oh me. Oh, my God. And, and so now, like, especially these days, like, it takes a little more to get me to jump from a jump scare. So I appreciate the use of sound uh, and the building up of the tension and then the loud effects. And this. I like the way they're playing with sound nowadays in these movies and really getting you to, to, to more than just visually grabbing you, but pulling you in with the sound and then, boom, hitting you with stuff and making you... You know, yeah. making you jump a little more too. So, probably not a new thing, but I think it's just something that I've noticed more 
in a lot more of the movies that we're watching this this last couple of years that we've been doing this. So mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. very cool stuff. So uh, so let's do some trivia real quick. Well, one of the uh, bits of trivia we can talk about is that this was originally slated to be on Hulu mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a streaming release, but the initial screenings went out and it got such positive reviews, they decided to take it to the theaters and do a theatrical release. This is a 20th Century Studios production and uh, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Intended for Hulu. Um, I guess but they learned after Prey. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 you know, because Prey was one that people loved and raved about, and we were all just like, "Wow, this just got, went right to Hulu. You should have put this in the theaters." Yeah, you know, I think they might have. They didn't want to make the same mistake twice, and they they looked at this way. Oh, I think it's based on a Stephen King book. Let's do some test screeners. <laughs> I think it's hard too because people don't go to the movies like they used to. No. Everyone likes to watch movies in the comfort of, of their own home. But it, you don't get the same, you the same from it, especially same. with the, the horror film. No, you don't and, get the same effect. You don't no. get the same uh, intensity. You don't get the same uh, feel that you mm -hmm. do in the theater, especially if you see it with people and everybody's jumping or everybody's, oh, or everybody's gasping and, and, and uh, you know, all kind of feeling the same vibes together. Yeah, even with comedies, laughing and stuff. Yeah, everything's infectious. Uh, yeah, and this one was definitely one worth seeing in the theater, especially because of the music and the, and the sound design mm -hmm. pl all plays into it. I mean, you're not going to have your sound up loud enough. And, and TVs nowadays have, like, sound thresholds and stuff where they'll, they'll cap your sound at a certain level so you won't, might not get those big jumps that you get in the theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, and I like, it's just great to have horror movies in the theater. And if people really want to see them, they go out and see them. And this one did in the box office. Let's take a look real quick because it is right here. So, uh, it was all, it was released alongside Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which obviously was going to win the box office. Nobody's yeah. beating a Spider-Man movie, animated or not, but, uh, projected to gross 15 million from 3,200 theaters, made 4.8 on its first day. Debut on 12.4 million on its opening weekend, finishing third behind The Little Mermaid and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So that's not bad. Man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're a horror movie and you're finishing third behind two of the biggest yes. kids, children's children's is franchises yes. <laughs> in history. I mean, Spider-Man is one of the biggest franchises ever and The Little Mermaid's easily oh, yeah. one of the biggest Disney uh franchises despite the the controversy over the you know skin color of the mermaid these days people are ridiculous but mm. different video for that one <laughs> but yeah for for a horror movie to jump in there third is great man yeah. to, to to be right there among them so a uh, good move by uh, 20th century to to Take this off of Hulu first and uh, and put it out of theaters. If, yeah, I wonder if it'll go on Hulu. That's what I suspect now. Once it yeah. does, it finishes its theatrical run. It's going to wind up on, on Hulu, Hulu, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. you'll be able to watch it. Uh, but I would say don't wait for it to come to Hulu. Go see no. it in the theater yeah. so that you get that great sound experience. Definitely. Take the time. Mm -hmm. so, uh so, yeah, another little... Do you have any tea, uh, besides uh, the my only, other trivia? Well, I gave a few throughout, but the YouTube video on how to contact the dead that Sadie was <laughs> watching, the refer it, it references the director's previous film, Host 2020, with the same location and actress of that film. So it was like he was uh, giving himself a little nod. The okay. video was uh, from was that him, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, thought that yeah. I like little things like Interesting. that. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, here it's all over. As soon as I, uh, as soon as I. What did you type? Uh, the boogeyman oh, and lightsaber. Uh, <laughs> duh. Type, I didn't type. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I just discovered this story. Very interesting. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more of it as I get here now. Uh, but apparently, the boogeyman writers put in homage to Star Wars in their script. And I don't know if this was, maybe it'll be in this story, but uh, I don't know if it was because they had two actresses and Princess Leia in there or not, but- I have but a feeling that's exactly why. Uh, our, our young actress Sawyer was supposed to fight 
the uh, shadow monster with a toy lightsaber. Which makes sense because she had all these glowing toys in her room. Mm hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there's a lot, of, there's a few stories about this on the internet. Apparently, Disney objected <laughs> to them uh, using a lightsaber in the episode and they had to remove it. Uh, even though Disney, which also owns 20th Century Studios, the company that made bo the Boogeyman, uh, they did not want them. Let's see, here we go. I feel like people have fought things, like different movies have used lightsabers. Sure, but okay, so here we go. Answering a question about the moon ball that Blair's character actually has in the movie, Savage said this. It's a real thing that you can buy from Amazon, so we bought a few of them, cracked them open, and put a light inside that we could control and dial up and down. But the interesting thing about that, especially with the Princess Leia of it all, was that in the original script, she had a toy light state, excuse me. In the original script, she had a toy lightsaber instead of a moon ball that she would hold close to her bed. That's what is used to, that's what I used to sleep with as a kid. Oh. And the whole idea was that it was a knockoff lightsaber that started to fritz out when the creature was near and eventually shattered. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Continuing his quote, and Disney, in all fairness, didn't want an image in the movie of a young Princess Leia with a shitty knockoff lightsaber mm. fritzing out in her hand. So they said no, that we had to come up with something else. And so me and the production team desperately searched for kids' toys that glow. And we found the moon ball, we thought would be a great prop, and rewrote the scenes, ended up being some of the scariest, best scenes in the movie. Yeah. That is pretty cool. That makes sense, though. Yeah, since that Disney does make and sense. So, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't realize I, I, that it was going to be like a fritzing out lightsaber. But, I mean, that, it should fritz out when the thing gets close. Well, it's, I, it's, Disney, like a, it's like an advanced warning Disney didn't mechanism. want her image with that. Yeah, yeah, I, I get, get that. It. I get yeah. it. Because then people are going to take it and make memes out of it and put her all over the place with the fritzing out lightsaber there's, there's and be so like, many, yeah. when Darth Vader shows up, and <laughs> you need a Snickers bar or some yeah. shit like that. You know, some <laughs> dumb fucking meme shit yeah. like that. The internet will run wild with that shit. The internet ruins good shit. But uh, but yeah, the, I mean, the 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 glowing ball though that did wind up working probably better because you're not going to roll the lightsaber underneath the bed and no. get that jump scare of the creature. No. And that's that what was sounds a really like great. They were, they were happier with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a really great, uh, great, great happy accident, I guess you would say. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool though. That the yeah. I thought that moon ball was something you. I, I figured it was something you could actually buy. There are similar but things. They put the light in yeah. it themselves. Now, if a company was smart, they would they make would them. They would put the fucking light in it themselves. Whoever makes that moon ball should put the fucking light in it and uh, market that shit. I feel like there's <laughs> there's similar. Stay safe from the boogeyman, kids. Get your light up. <laughs> Moon ball. <laughs> oh, great. Are we making And then this? show them the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's six. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't like kids. <laughs> <laughs> movie kids are okay. Best advice. <laughs> movie kids. Yeah, yeah. You hate the kids in all the movies. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Especially, but, but I, I get to go home after an hour and a half. I don't have to deal with it. I, so I only have to deal with them for an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and sometimes when they die and I can cheer, that's even better. It's your favorite. <laughs> it's your favorite. We had one. Yeah. Something else uh, to watch. Oh, well. Yeah, we'll get it out another yeah. time. Anyway. All right. So I guess that's about it. Let's give our final thoughts here. Uh, what was your, I mean. My final thoughts are, like like we said, if you, if you're, if you weren't listening to us this entire hour or so, <laughs> whatever, go see it in the theater. It's scary. Jump scares are like insane. Um, story. Don't worry about the story too much, even though I feel like we do. Like we said, like we get to know enough of the um, the family to care about them, and it. But it makes sense. There's nothing too dragged out. There's nothing. You know that you're kind of like angry that happened or scratching your head why that happened it, it kind of just goes through it quick is it what is it an hour and a half yeah 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 hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so i i love i loved it i thought it was great i'll recommend it to anyone mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. I recommend it. I recommend go see it in the theater. Support horror in the theaters so that they keep putting them there. Mm-hmm. Uh, show because that's the only way we're going to keep getting them and we're going to get bigger budgets to make these movies and studios are going to take chances on uh, movies and stuff is if we go and show them with our dollars at the theater that we want this stuff out there and we don't want some of this rehashed crap that they keep getting just going to say not another <laughs> you know. but, uh, but yeah I mean uh, the sound, the the direction, the acting was amazing. Um, you know, this is nothing new. This isn't. You know, they're not they're not uh, creating some creature. It's the boogeyman. I mean, it's it's the basic story about the boogeyman. But what they do well is the character development, and the acting, and the directing, and the scares. Like everything works, and everything falls into place really well, and makes a really Fun ride. Mm -hmm. It's a really fun ride if you're a horror fan and you dig this kind of stuff. So, highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I find myself getting like so scared at these things. <laughs> I'm like, why do I put myself through this? Because I love thing. it. Because I, I love I, it. I wish I got that scared more. Uh, <laughs> I got. I wish I got more of those scares. Oh my I should god. Say. <laughs> All, right. Uh, All right. Well, once again. If you have not subscribed or followed or mm -hmm. wherever you are listening or watching us right now, mm -hmm. make sure you do. Make sure you comment or like or message or email the mailbag. At deadsvillehardtalk at gmail.com. Subject mailbag. Yeah. yeah. And that's M-A-I-L bag. Not M-A-L-E bag. Just in case people were wondering. I think I'll take either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you will, Stephanie Fetchin. <laughs> oh! All right. <laughs> All right, folks. That's it. Mm -hmm. Send us some messages. Let us know what we should watch next. Yes. Send us pictures of your collections, cool Ooh. shirts, anything like that. If you notice, we got some cool shirts we're rocking this week. Yeah. Ghostface Film Club, Goosebumps. That's, my That's a cool shirt you got there, Steph and Fiction. Thanks again, Ronan. Yeah, Ronan comes up with all the good wardrobe choices for episodes, huh? <laughs> Woo! All right. Until next time, stay spooky, fiends. Bye, Scream Hearts. <laughs>